Anita Baker caught up in a rapture. You're listening to Clara Hermit. This is BBC Radio London. I've got to put the food to the side. It's been in front of me this whole time and I've just been been kind of eating it. But I do have a job to do and I'm about to welcome our next guest to the show who actually feel like if she was here, she could have enjoyed this, this curry with me. Um, the book that she is a co-author of is called Think Like a Vegan, What Everyone Can Learn from Vegan Ethics. Her name is Amelia A. Lease and she joins me on the line now. Uh, good afternoon, Amelia. How are you? Hello, Clara. I'm very well, and how are you? Yeah, not too bad at all. I've noticed you've been on you've been on Twitter, and you've been having a little listen to the show. And I've learned a new word from from you actually, which is for clemped. I didn't know what yes. it meant. I had to Google it. <laughs> it's such a great word, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And and now I'm going to try and make it part of my vocabulary. The team here at BBC Radio London have promised they're going to test me next week and see if I've still remembered it. So we'll see. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and so, your, your lunch sounds great. Oh, it's so good. I feel I'm just on top of the world right now. I'm such a, a foodie. And I think sometimes when uh, when it comes to people putting the two things together in terms of vegan and foodie, people think, oh, how can you be a vegan and, and be a foodie? But there is so much wonderful food that can be made, that can be experienced, that is absolutely vegan, that you can be both, can't you? Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. Without a doubt. So let's talk a little bit about the book, Think Like a Vegan, What Everyone Can Learn from Vegan Ethics. Where did this idea come from to write this book? Well, the idea really was inspired by um, vegan donuts. Oh. And uh, <laughs> so there you go. Um, Eva and I met in, in Berkeley in California. And uh, um, we just, over the years, we were talking about it. And then one day... Um, in, in Toronto, actually, she and her partner were driving me back to uh, the airport after a vegan festival that um, I had been volunteering at. Oh, hold on. I think we might have lost. Gosh. Oh, well, no. We lost what? you for a second there. We got to the oh, bit okay. where you that you said that a vegan festival that you've been volunteering at. Oh, right. So we were at the vegan festival. They were driving me back to the um, to the airport and uh, we had had vegan pastries and we thought well gosh what can we do to make it easier for people to explain their own veganism to others yeah. and then for 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 others to easily understand what veganism is all about mm. so we wanted to create a, a tool um to make it easy for anyone to explain it either to others if they're vegan and for non-vegans to be able to understand it easily. And that's how the idea came up. We came up with, uh, with the, the initial idea was to have a sort of a workbook to have scenarios that we would be able to explain. But then obviously a workbook doesn't work unless you also have the stuff before it. Right. And so there we go. There's there go. the idea that's for the book. What are some of the themes within the book and some of the things that you discuss? So we tried to made it, make it as applicable to everyday life as we could. Mm. So we talk about our personal life a little bit. We talk about the uh, core values of, of, of vegan ethics and explaining that in the easiest way we can. We talk about food a bit. We talk about health a bit. We talk about environment a bit. And we also talk about um, the various other intersections of veganism with other uh, ideas of social justice, including feminism and uh, and and poverty, and, and how everything veganism really can touch every part of our lives. Yes. and we try to reflect that in the book. Yeah, and and it's it's interesting, isn't it? Because I've been vegan now for six years, and it is that kind of question that people are like, well, why, why are you vegan? That's you know, that's very much a question that people ask, and. Sometimes I, in my head I think, oh, here we go. And, you know, one of the reasons for me going vegan w was to do with health and to, to be healthier. But the main reason was ethics. And and so you then think, I'm going to have to say this to somebody. And, you know, sometimes you are met with, uh, with a lot of defensiveness sometimes when you say those things. And I'm, you know, I'm quite a, a chilled out person and I'm very kind of respectful that everybody's able to, to make their own choices. And, you know, the way that I see things is I was a meat eater and I was adamant, I grew up with a sister who was vegetarian. I was adamant I was never going to stop eating meat. Fast forward a few years, I overnight went vegan. So, you know, anything can happen at any time. But it, it does sometimes get, you know, not difficult to explain, but you feel yourself going, uh-oh, here we go again. So 
Sure, to have ways to, to do that and to kind of, you know, have some help on how to do that, I think is a, is a really important thing. Ex exactly. I, and, and, you know, people, the defensiveness can work both yes. ways because people feel threatened in, in, in thinking, well, are you accusing me of being a bad person? Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, the vegan person saying, are you going to come after me for, for my ethical choices? So it's sort of a misunderstanding of both. And that's where the, 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 the defensiveness, you know, can get in the way of conversations. Yeah. So we very much hope that our book can be um, a tool for conversations between people and can help because also it's an emotional, a, a very emotional topic on both sides. Yes. Um, and, and which emotions are great and they're really important. Um, but sometimes they can get in the way of our expressing ourselves in the best possible way, you know? Yeah, and I, and I think that's definitely part of it, isn't it? If someone is, it becomes particularly reactive or emotional and then, you know, it's almost like the other person then matches that same energy. But no one's listening to anyone anymore. It's just become this kind of, you know, almost eruption of emotions on, on both sides. And, and you don't really get anywhere like that at all, I, I think. But, you know, for somebody who as well is maybe thinking like you say this is for, for vegans who who want to have more information and just a, a better way to maybe be able to express themselves and to talk about things but this is also for people who might be thinking well why are so many people going vegan what is exactly. it that's driving these people to go vegan and you know maybe they don't feel comfortable asking somebody or they might think i'm not going to get all the answers i'd much prefer to sit in my own space in my own time and read you know read this book so that i can come to my own conclusion exactly exactly i mean for for example, a parent whose child says, you know, adolescent teen, I mean, I'm thinking of myself as an adolescent teen back then, mm. and, and, and thinking, well, gosh, you know, this would be perfect if uh, the child is saying, well, I want to go vegan, and then they have a big fight with the parent. And this book could facilitate that relationship and could facilitate that moment in the relationship because the, the child might have, um, it might feel a lot of angst um, in discussing it. And, and the parent might also say, enough job for you, that kind of thing. Yes. And, that's, and as you said, it creates the space for the parent to say, okay, I'm going to go read this and then we can talk about it. Yeah. And, uh, and, and one of the things that I'm reading here, which I didn't actually know, which is according to latest figures, the numbers of vegans in the UK have more than quadrupled since 2014, now representing over 1% of the total population, which is, you know, it's incredible to think how much has changed in terms of, even for me in the last six years, in terms of what's available, what people's knowledge is, how much people know, how much conversation there is, people's perceptions of what a vegan yep. is as well, I think, exactly. um, is very interesting. And, and I guess the book kind of takes a look at all of those things, I suppose. Yes, that's exactly right. I mean, same for me too. I mean, even just the term itself, mm. everybody knows what that is now. Yes. You don't have to. It's not a strange term for for anyone. You know, I some time back I, I was having a chat with um, uh, with the fruit and veg monger in my neighborhood, and we got to talking about something. And he said, "Yeah, well, vegan. Well, everybody knows what that is. It, you, you know." And I was like, "Yeah, gosh, you're you're right." <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's I suppose that's different for, for people who have been vegan for 20 or 30 years and they've kind of, you know, grown up and, and experienced a time where everyone was like, huh, sorry, what are you doing? What? For what reason? Um, exactly. To, to suddenly Such have a an, an influx of more people who get it and who understand it must be a, a nice thing. And just to have more products available as well, I think, is good. But but I think with the book you're talking about, obviously, uh, vegan ethics, and I think sometimes that is where the, the kind of difficulty comes in, in terms of discussing things with people and trying to, to, you know, get people to just understand your perspective or, you know, just to look at a different perspective. So um, I, I think it's great that you've, you've put together the book. What's the feedback been like? The feedback has been unbelievable. Uh, I, I, you know, as I said, verklempt pretty much all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, we've gotten feedback from people who've been vegan for a very long time, and they said this this book has changed perspective on a number of things and has opened up my eyes to looking at it even more widely. From non-vegans who said, you know what, I'm not vegan, 
but I'm reading this and this is so thought provoking and I now I, I'm beginning to understand and and it's it's incredibly satisfying to to write something because that's that's exactly what Eva and I wanted to to put something out that everybody could understand and everybody could use and it's incredibly satisfying to mm. to to hear the feedback that says yeah you you did that and 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 we we are now thinking about different things and are are looking at our everyday in a different way and and they are sending me articles oh did you see this this piece about that what do you think about that uh you know and it's it's really it's amazing yeah yeah, and, and I'm just looking through the, the chapters and there's this the heading of the chapter, which is if you believe in social justice, you believe in, in veganism. And, you know, sometimes I think that that kind of perspective of, of looking at veganism, because some people just look at it as a diet, don't they? You know, yes. I think just vegan is just a diet, but actually it's, it's much more than, than a diet. And, uh, and I think that just reading that title of that chapter is kind of like, there you go, that's the, that's the thing that people need to be looking at, isn't it? Exactly. It is the sort of bingo moment. Yeah. Um, it encapsulates it all. Yes, indeed. Look, it's been so lovely to talk to you and thank you very much. And I, I have the book now, so I'm going to give it a good read. And I've got my vegan curry here and my vegan kombucha and all of the things around me. Um, and uh, and it was really lovely. I know you were listening earlier when I was talking to, to Nigel and shouting out some of the favourite restaurants that I like to go to when I'm here in London. Do you have a particular favourite when you're here? Hands down, Black Cat. Oh, it's so but good, I, isn't it? Oh my gosh, love it. And love the, love the place, love the people. And I can't wait to try the sushi place. I haven't tried that one yet. Well, when you're in town next, let me know. I'm, I'm inviting everyone there now. I'm going to go with Nigel. I'll go with you as well when you're here. And, uh, and, and we'll hang out and we'll go and get some vegan sushi because it is really, really great. Can't wait. Amelia, thank you so been, much. It's been so lovely to talk to you. Look after yourself and enjoy the rest of your Friday. And you, thank you so much. Take care, that is Amelia A. Lees, and she's the co-author of a book that's called Think Like a Vegan, What Everyone Can Learn from Vegan Ethics. You're listening to Clara Hermit here on BBC Radio London. Still to come, we've got brand